Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, Roe vs Wade overturned. Let us try and understand what is this topic all about. First up, let's look into the context. The United States Supreme Court has overturned by a 6 is to 3 majority Roe vs Wade, the country's landmark 1973 judgment that made abortion a constitutional right. What did the Supreme Court say? The Supreme Court said that the constitution does not confer a right to abortion. This case has been overruled and the authority to regulate abortion is return to the people and their elected representatives. In this particular backdrop, we will try and understand what was the historical 1973 landmark judgment given by the Supreme Court of India, what has it overturned in the present situation, we will understand the appointment procedure with respect to the Supreme Court judges, we will understand the political consequences, we will try and understand the pro-abortion and against abortion arguments and the global ramifications in this lecture. First up, we have to understand what is this Roe vs Wade all about. When we go back to the year 1969, women named Norma McCorvey, using the pseudonym Jane Roe, challenged the criminal abortion laws in Texas. Back in 1969, when you look at laws in Texas, it did not allow the women to abort the fetus, it allowed only when the mother's life was in danger. As a result, what she feels is that this particular law was violating the privacy of an individual which is already guaranteed in the Constitution of United States of America and hence she files a case. Defending the anti-abortion law was Henry Wade, the district attorney for Dallas County and hence this particular case goes on to become Roe vs. Wade. In 1973, her appeal made it to the US Supreme Court. The question before the US Supreme Court was, does the American constitution recognize a woman's right to terminate her pregnancy by abortion? They argued that the abortion laws in Texas and Georgia went against the US constitution because it infringed the women's right to privacy. In this particular judgment, by a vote of 7 to 2, the court justices ruled that the government did not have the power to prohibit abortions and this particular judgment went on to say that the women's right to terminate a pregnancy was also protected by the United States of America's constitution. So the Supreme Court declared abortion to be a fundamental right located within the right to privacy and advocated it on the grounds that having unwanted children may force upon women a distressful life causing psychological harm tax her health among other reasons. So what did the Supreme Court say? The Supreme Court said that a woman would be able to abort the fetus and this is included under the right to privacy. How did the court get to this conclusion? This was on the basis of trimester system. The court broadly categorized the trimester into the first trimester, second trimester as well as the third trimester. Absolute right was given to the woman in the first trimester. So during this particular period, that is for the first three months of the pregnancy, the women could abort the fetus, so absolute right was given to the women. In the second trimester, the state or the government would be able to impose reasonable restrictions. But in the third trimester, absolute ban was imposed on the third trimester. So what the Roe and Wade was able to establish is that in the final trimester, they would not be able to eliminate, but they could eliminate only if the mother's life is in danger. But reasonable restrictions were imposed under the second second trimester but absolute right were given under the first trimester. So what is the difference right now with respect to the 1973 judgment? In the 1973 judgment, the court had ruled in Roe versus Wade that pregnant people were entitled to an abortion during the first three months of their pregnancy while allowing for legal restrictions and bans in the second and the third trimester. Now the court has overturned the earlier ruling effectively making it possible for the state even to impose abortion bans earlier than the 12 weeks as well. So this absolute right which was given to the women in the first trimester under the earlier judgment is overturned in the present judgment. So the state in all likelihood may come up with your own laws banning abortion in multiple states in United States of America. Before we understand what is the likely consequences, we have to understand why this judgment has surfaced right now. This is where we have to understand the appointment of the Supreme Court judges. Who appoints the Supreme Court judges? The US Constitution provides the federal judges, including the Supreme Court justices, are to be nominated by the President and confirmed by the 
Senate, the U.S. Upper Chamber of the U.S. Congress. The Constitution of United States of America does not stipulate the number of Supreme Court judges that are to be in place. This is ultimately given to the Congress. So how many Supreme Court judges have to be present is not mentioned in the United States of America's Constitution, but that power is to be decided by the Congress. So all the justices are nominated by the President. They have to be confirmed by the Senate and they hold their offices till their entire lifetime. So justices remain in office until they resign or pass away or are impeached or convicted by the Congress. So this is a complete contradiction between India and United States of America. When it comes to India, what happens? These judges are selected or nominated by what is called as the collegium system and not by the elected politicians. But when it comes to United States of America, you have the president who is nominating these judges. When it comes to India, you also have a tenure system as well. This is about 65 years, but when it comes to United States of America, there is no tenure system. They would be able to serve in the United States of America Supreme Court for their entire lifetime until they resign, until they pass away or they are impeached or convicted by the Congress. Why are we discussing this? That is because there are about nine judges who are on the panel in the Supreme Court, six of whom were appointed by the Republican president. So in the first slide, we saw that it was six is to three that the judgment was given. All the six people who have passed this particular judgment against the Joe versus Wade are the people who were appointed by the Republicans. This is where the politics of United States of America comes into picture. There are two major political parties in United States of America. One happens to be Democrats, the other happens to be Republicans. When it comes to the Democrats, they believe in pro-choice. They believe that women have the right, they should be able to decide whether they want to abort or not. So when it comes to United States of America, the Democratic Party has been pro-choice in approach. Then we have the Republicans as well. The Republicans are the conservatives. They believe in pro-life stance and as a result, because of this particular judgment, there are states which are represented by the Democrats which may come up with a law which are pro-choice in nature and when it comes to Republicans, they may come up with law which can be pro-life in nature. So the US Supreme Court has opened the door for individual states to ban or severely restrict the ability for pregnant women to get abortions. How have the states reacted? 13 states have already passed so-called trigger laws to automatically outlaw abortion. Which are these 13 states? Let's say for example, we have Texas, we have Oklahoma. These are some of the states which have already passed what is called as the trigger laws. What is this trigger law? This is a scenario where the legislature pass a law but this law is not enforceable it becomes enforceable only when certain scenario or a circumstance occurs in this particular case the trigger law basically means that it will become enforceable only when the supreme court of united states of america overrules the abortion law. So the minute United States of America Supreme Court overrules the abortion law, that is when the anti-abortion laws will immediately come into place in all these states. For example, in Texas as well as in the Oklahoma. So some states intend to ban abortion from the moment of conception while others are introducing bans at six or more weeks as well. So all states allow abortion to save the life of the mother while some will also allow exemptions to their ban for the cases of rape or incest. Who are seeking for the ban? When you look into the average person seeking an abortion in the US in 2019 was in her 20s who already had the children, had the abortion in the first three months of the pregnancy, had never had an abortion before. These are the statistics given with respect to United States of America. Now what we have to do is discuss the impact because of this judgment. Studies have estimated that hundreds of thousands of Americans have tried to end a pregnancy without the help of a doctor at some point in their lives, whether through medication, herbs, vitamin C, alcohol, drugs or self-harm. So even before the law was overturned, you had people in United States of America who were using their own methods to abort the fetus. But now since it is overturned, this could further increase as well. So the laws against abortion put many people at risk and this means that they may not get to the institutions and they may try their own ways. This pushes them into the underground, limiting access to the safe abortions. 
as a result there will be rise of the dangerous methods unqualified people may engage in the procedures and online pharmacies peddling abortion pills may also increase in united states of america for women in the relatively liberal democratic states and for women elsewhere who have the means to travel to a clinic abortion may still be acceptable what do we mean by it as we just discussed the united states of america supreme court has overruled the historical judgment this means states would be able to draft their own laws as we initially discussed the democrats are liberal they are pro choice and at the same time the republicans are pro life and they are conservatives as well so for women who are present in the democrat ruled states they would be able to continue with their abortion laws they would be able to abort the baby as well but for those who are in the republican states they have to travel to these democrat states and ultimately the poor people may not be able to travel and ultimately they may lose their lives as well and they may get under the control of the quacks as well where procedures can kill these women but poor women especially in many republican states may find traveling to other states for in clinic abortions to be an impossible challenge it is in this particular backdrop we have to understand some of the arguments with respect to pro life as well as the pro choice who are the people who support the pro choice these people are the ones who say that women have a moral right to decide what to do with their bodies it is their bodies they will decide whether they want to abort the baby or not the right to abortion should be a part of the portfolio of the pregnancy rights that enables the women to take a free choice whether to end the pregnancy or not a pregnancy to a woman is one of the determinative aspects of her life it disrupts her body it disrupts her education it disrupts her employment it often disrupts the entire family life since it has a large scale reper questions on her it is she the woman alone who would be able to decide her life so it is her body she would be able to take a call and then she supports the abortion laws is one set of argument then there are also people who are against abortion because they are the people who believe in pro life life begins at the conception making abortion laws is equivalent to murder they argue that a fetus is not some sort of thing like a leg or a liver it is not just a part of a woman's body but it is a separate person with its own right to life it is about women go ahead you can do whatever you want but there is a new life that is being born you do not have the right to disturb that particular life are some of the arguments with respect to the pro life if you look into the statistics the world health organization asserts that unsafe abortions are the leading cause of maternal death with 13% of them attributed to the procedure in developing countries alone 7 million women were treated in hospital for complications arising from unsafe abortions in 2012 estimates from 2006 show that complications from unsafe abortions cost health systems in developing countries 553 dollar million per year and resulted in a loss of household income amounting to 922 million these are the likely consequences if unsafe abortion takes into picture what will be the global ramifications this particular judgment will not only impact the reproductive rights of the women in united states of america but this will also have likely consequences on the global level as well let's look at the arguments when it comes to united states of america it is like a strict disciplinarian it advocates gender equality it ask people to ensure that there is human rights in their country and at the same time provide health care to the people in and around the country while on one side it advocates all these aspects of gender equality what is happening in the present situation there is contradiction to the values it is trying to advocate for abroad on one side it has its own laws which does not respect the women's rights but on the other side it advocates the entire world that you have to bring gender parity is it not contradictory in nature this is the first global ramification the ruling may also fuel anti abortion movements as well this will actually limit the abortion access and will also complicate the politics surrounding the women rights as well it is likely to embolden conservative anti abortion voices across the world it is likely to bring more conservative voices and they will oppose the abortion laws in their own country this also questions the constitutional jurisprudence across the entire world when we look at united states of america you have number of laws that are drafted in united states of america which is used 
used and quoted in number of other countries as well. If you speak about the Bill of Rights, which happens to be the fundamental rights in India, if you speak about Menaka Gandhi case, the due process of law, which was imported from United States of America. So many countries look up to United States of America and they derive their laws or the precedents that have been established by the Supreme Court. Now, with this particular judgment, it is violating the constitutional jurisprudence as some of the pro-choice with respect to the women has been violated in this particular case. This also questions the judicial activism as well. The judiciary happens to be the last ray of hope. If a woman has issues, she ultimately goes to the Supreme Court or to the High Court in the respective countries. But now, even the judicial activism is not able to reimpose this faith. Ultimately, women world over may also suffer. The US has an oversized influence worldwide, but particularly in Africa. There is a saying that if United States of America sneezes, the whole world gets a cold. In Malawi, advocates have pushed for legislation to expand access to safe abortions when a pregnancy is the result of rape or incest or if a woman's health is at risk. Now, since the overruling has happened in United States of America, all the efforts to pass the legislation could be further stalled due to US Supreme Court's decision. So, because United States of America's Supreme Court has come up with this decision, other countries may look up to it and may also come up with similar laws in their country. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. So, this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.